Hey, what's up, everybody? Mark here. I'm in the car, Tesla today, the Model 3, and we got a new update, the brand new one that actually comes in uh, last night. I, you probably saw the sneak peek of me talking uh, about the dash cam, but we're going to do the whole video today. So this is 10.2, and it's the 2020 6.1. Uh, it's fully installed, so we're going to look at it right here. The release notes, basically some improvements to the previous one uh, that doesn't require you to do a, a lot of the stuff that you did before. So we're going to go to that. So traffic light and stop sign control beta is in here. That's listed in here. But what's different about this is they actually have, uh, when you're going up to a traffic light here and there's a car in front of you, you no longer have to tap the stock to in order to get the car to proceed through that. So if there's a lead vehicle in front of you, that's going to uh, that's going to work in your benefit there. You're going to be able to just follow through the traffic light like that. So one of the things I noticed is when it hits yellow, the car will actually slow down or stop at the red light. It's actually responding to them a lot better uh, than it was. So that's one of those things right there. It's telling you to, you know, obviously take immediate action, pay attention, all that stuff like there. It may not stop for all traffic control. Right now it's really good. So I drove it home from Tampa last night and the autopilot was like smooth all the way from I-4. We had a, a GPS update and a navigation update on the previous one. And I finally got to ride on I-4 and it was phenomenal. So that's one of those things there. And as you guys had seen previously, the dash cam improvements, uh, the backup camera, I should say, the backup camera has some improvements there. You not only have the single rear that does, I'm gonna say like 170 degrees in the rear, but you also have two uh, side cameras here on the side markers where, the, where your, your turn signals are as well in the side there that give an extra, like I'm gonna say 10 degrees. It's a full 180 degrees on that view now. You get to see the entire thing like there. So the dash cam improvements is phenomenal. There's some improvements in there. Before it was like, it was daunting to go in there. You wanna go in and find a, a, a piece of footage and get that, it was a task because you had to look through 10 minutes of footage, sliding through and figuring out what caused this thing to go off. By the time that you found it, you were exhausted because you already had looked probably through two or three of those footages there. Let's jump into the viewer. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at the way the dash cam works now when you have some type of an event and what it does for you. So as you can see here, I'm driving along this road right here, uh, but down here there's this little red dot. And that little red dot is essentially where I triggered the dash cam to come on, whether it be honking the horn or coming up here and tash, tapping that. So it looks like I just did it right when I got home. And no matter which one you jump into, even your old footage, like some old footage that's from April before this is here, you can come right there and tap to that. And you can see over here on the right hand side that it was triggered uh, apparently by that and then someone walking in front as well. So that's gonna help out tremendously when you're having to filter through and siphon through videos. Uh, you're gonna make it to, so much easier. You don't have to have that task of, of going in and, and constantly looking for stuff right there. And as you can see right here, for some reason I uh, was driving down this road and I triggered the dash cam on it. So let's see exactly what it was. Uh, going into Walmart, um, who knows what it was, this one here. Oh yeah, this car almost hit me over here on the right hand side, like coming out like that. So I triggered it right there and saved that footage, but it showed exactly why I triggered it and it brings you right to it. And that's pretty much nice right there. So that, that's, that's smart, that's no brainer. I think a lot of security camera footage already have that. Uh, like our Nest or our Rings, whatever we use, and they have that there. So tune improvements, I haven't really used tune in. If some of you have, just leave a little comment in, in below because I don't know what it was before to what it is now. But what they're saying in here is with this update, uh, improve the usability and discovery of the tune in stations and podcasts, make it easier to browse content. We've also had the ability to just playback. That's pretty good. So 2x. I, had, I used to listen to podcasts in 2x, so we didn't have to listen to the whole thing. You cut it down really short, but still absorb a lot of the information there. Uh, the walkway and lock improvements, I haven't had any issues with it, thankfully, but now it says you have the option to disable walkway door lock when your vehicle is parked at home. Tap controls, locks, and select exclude home. So some more exclusions there, because maybe in your garage you don't want it to lock because you're in there or in your front driveway because no one's near you. Uh, so that's what they're doing that for, it seems like right there. And then you just basically, if you want to set your home, you go to navigate, set home, and that, that's something we all have done, I believe, already. I know I did. So. Uh, some new language support, easy enough. Portuguese uh, as your language there, that's good. And cabin camera. We talked about this the other day, and if you haven't heard already, not that I'm paranoid or anything like that. However, I just don't want someone watching me if it's willy-nilly and, and there might be something in there or Tesla gets hacked or anything of the, the sorts. The camera up in the dash up here, you might not be able to see it. 
and you'll be able to see it. It's right up in here. I don't know what the uh, the field of view is, but I imagine it's got to be the whole entire car. Probably another one of those like 90 to 100 degrees uh, field of view looking into the car. Well, I don't really want that. So what I've done is I've created a little tiny tab that goes over it. It goes on with actually this right here, this 3M tape that I got. Cut it out and you stick it right up there and there's a little slider on it. Really simple and easy. I'm shipping those out five bucks and you can cover it up. Well, that GPS update in the previous one, that one helped out really good. Other than that, we're going to take a drive. If you guys are ready, autopilot yesterday was very smooth, but let's go. We're going to get a ride in. Autopilot's on. Just nice cruise down my neighborhood. So as always, we're seeing the cones. We're seeing everything that you normally would see. Nothing too fancy. Trash cans. But the major improvements are the dash cam and the uh, traffic light from that previous release right there. So... I think it's gonna be good. All right, we're slowing down. This is a bit earlier than it had been before. Uh, we're coming up to these railroad tracks right here. Slowing through traffic control device, stopping, slowing, and it goes all the way down to 10 miles an hour. Uh-oh, stops on the railroad track, so we don't wanna do that. Uh, we're gonna be coming up to another railroad track set up here, and that's going to ultimately give us uh, uh, another idea of what we see on the roadway there. Now I have such a habit of driving and not really paying attention here and seeing what's on this screen. And I believe the railroad crossing signs on the roadway are new. Uh, if you guys want to leave that in the comment there, like right there, see how it has the X and the RRs? That seems pretty good. Got a green bar across there. We're going right through the uh, intersection here uh, for that traffic control device. And you know what? Let's put on the rear camera while we're at it. Let's talk about that. Look at that. Isn't that cool? There we go. Now we can see in the blind spots. This camera on the left-hand side and right-hand side that's showing those two pillars of those side cameras are, I'm talking about phenomenal. You can see 100% more than you can with not having them. Does that make sense? Oh, we got to hit it. There's no one in front of us. We do have a bicyclist on the road. It picked it up. Look how far it picked it up. I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but way back there, I'm going to have to take over. Uh, because it is not moving over for him there, but it's the car did start to slow down and uh, process that that bicycle was way down the road comparatively to what it was before. Because sometimes it'll be, uh, you know, like 50 feet or 100 feet in front of you, and then you'll see the bicyclist right there. So I was bringing up the speed, two cones, those are accurate. And if you do see some cones that are knocked over on the screen down here, that has been happening for the last update. Uh, some of the cones are when they're on the road tilted over, you can see them on the screen up here tilted over as well. But back to these cameras here. So these cameras, I mean, look at them. That's, look how much view you have right here. I can look in my mirrors. I can look in this one here and I'm absolutely not having any trouble seeing what's around me, you know, literally 360 degrees. I got Ford, I got my two mirrors on the sides which show an okay view. And then I've got the ones uh, for this one in the back and then these two right here. As we mentioned here, I can see this I can see this car to my left over here, uh, out the B pillar here, I can see the back of the car, but these cameras pick it up a little bit further. Now, this car right here, I can barely see it in my mirror over here. I just see the tail end of it and just the tail light and a little bit of a wheel, that particular car right there. So there you go. Now I hope Tesla does something here and gives us the ability to type, move this around and slide those three together and maybe make even a really nice panoramic view here because that would really set it in right here a lot of people have been asking for the, the bird's eye view. Well, if you could have this bird's eye view, not necessarily bird's eye view, but this panoramic view of that rear, almost like a rear view, a digital rear view mirror, all you got to do is combine those three images together and kind of blend them. I think it would be a pretty easy process. Then we could have a digital rear view mirror right here that uh, would see uh, 180 degrees behind us. When this light turns green, I'm going to have to actually either tap on the accelerator or use the stock to start it because we have been at this traffic light, the light's been red, and we're not actively proceeding through it. So that's gonna be the trouble on this here. If you're at a traffic light like that, which is good if you're sitting here for a while, you need to double check and, and pay attention to what's going on, like this siren that is going on around here somewhere. You don't want the car to just take off on you. All right, so we got a green light. It's showing green up there. Oh! I didn't do that. I didn't touch the accelerator or that. So if you're about two or three car lengths back, I think it actually works that works pretty well, that's pretty good. That is super awesome. I'm gonna change lane, see how it does. Jumped over. Now you might've noticed on the screen here that the all far inside lane, the fast lane, the cars disappeared in, it, in this one here. 
I notice that a lot. Either it's the processing power that they're trying to reduce, or if it's just something that they do here that the cameras can't see it, but those cars disappear when you get into a far outside lane, which this is called here, the, the slow lane. The automatic wipers just kicked on. A little tiny sprinkle. There wasn't much up there. There's some little tiny droplets, but that kicked on pretty good. All right, I'm gonna move over so we can tr uh, go right through this traffic light with this car here. All right, we are over. Oh, that did it on its own. We were following through it, and we got a yellow light. And the yellow light triggered the car to actually slow down, but that was a pretty good example of how this traffic light is adapting. Before, you know, you'd either go all the way through it or it would just automatically stop, and that was pretty good. I like that right there. I'm happy about that. That's pretty nice. So being here at the traffic light ourselves, we're going to have to actually do something here with this by either hitting the gear stock or... Uh, hitting the accelerator on here because the car is not going to go on its own when the light turns green there it's green like that and we had to use the stock there bar turns green clear the intersection we're good to go perfect example this car over in my blind spot right there i cannot see it i can barely see it right there helpful really helpful now one of the other things that they talked about when this was here there's some range uh issues that were coming up they the car is better calculating the range well I charged my car up this is a standard range plus I charged my car up to the 90% and that appeared to be 196 miles of range I don't know what the percentage is if it if it showed an actual 90% range uh, but it was the uh, it was 196 miles which uh, I would imagine that it, it used to be 215 but uh, with how I drive and whatnot maybe that's exactly what it is everybody that tells me that is it's your driving habits it calculates it like that but i've been driving slower and i can s continuously see it ticking up just the tiniest bit right there so all right so we got another green light here it's going to make us do the stock again look at the, this one navigate through the intersection it's got a lot of gap between the intersection and then the next lines right there and it picked up pretty good uh so we'll bring up the speed to 55 i think it speeds 50 up here oh it's actually that's weird. Normally it won't let you go over uh, the speed limit when you have the uh, the red light detection and stop sign detection on, but for some reason it is here. All right, we got a green light. It's actually slowing down. I got to get over, change lanes pretty well right there. That car is pulling out from me. I think it's going to hit the brakes a little bit. Yep, going to hit the brakes. And what we're going to do is we're going to navigate on to the interstate right here. I'm just going to punch in. What are we going to put in? We're going to put something in. Why is this? I'm going to see if it'll take it around this turn. It's pretty, it's coming in here pretty aggressive. Yeah, it's pretty aggressive. Thinks this yield sign is a traffic control device. We're clear. We're going to go up and we're going to navigate on autopilot. All right, I had to do a reboot on the on the uh, the unit here because I was having some issue with the touch screen, and I cleaned my touch screen before this, so hopefully it'll clear it up. But I'm not too sure. And while you're doing a reboot while you're driving, I can't access any of the autopilot or anything like that. So we're gonna manually drive. We'll talk. We'll talk about the car a little bit. Uh, this car has been phenomenal. I've been enjoying it so much. Uh, with uh, with driving it and going places. I got 25,000 miles on the car. Just bought some new tires. They were in the back seat the other day. I got a video coming out about that and uh, how I got the tires for very cheap. We'll get that up here in just a little bit. All right, the car is rebooting. And I'm hoping that was a touchscreen issue. Like I said, I cleaned it because last time I did a video for you guys, you're like, man, your screen's dirty. And it was, it was really dirty. All right, so we got everything back on, booted up, ready to go, and I'm going to put on Navigate on Autopilot. We're going to increase our speed a little bit just to be kind of aggressive on here. I want to see how the lane passing and all that stuff works. All right, so Navigate on Autopilot is probably going to tell us to get over in the, in the lane over here. There it goes. We're going to move it over. Looks clear everywhere. Yeah, it looks pretty good like that. All 
So the traffic flow right there, as you can see, I'm going faster than the cars are next to me. So it is actually, it will start slowing the car down a little bit. And that's been uh, a few updates. If you haven't seen that in the ones, you can check out the previous updates where I uh, reviewed that there and went over it. So yeah, that's pretty good. Slow down the speed a little bit. That 55 is not accurate. It's like, it's 70 through here. So we're gonna go right at 70. 75. So we've got to exit here. Let's see how it works. That's pretty good. Literally no troubles on like that handling that right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch in home, see where it gets me there and how fast I can get it to square away. I think I need to go this way. Yep, I'm gonna have to manually drive it. All right, so that was pretty good. The interstate there, the Navigator Autopilot the same, the Autopilot's the same, nice and smooth. The GPS update is great because uh, this this is all new road and uh, Google or whatever map system they use has made it to where that actually is able to be, um, is able to be adapted to that roadway there. All right, we're back on Navigate. Well, actually on Navigate on Autopilot, well ahead of the, uh, the interstate here. Now it wants to get over for some reason. I don't know why. This is where that weird area is right here. So I've got to take over. This is a brand new paved road, different widths and everything like that. Ooh, that's tight, that's tight. Oh, slowed down for it, 35. Came in there kind of hot. Nice merge lane, those merge arrows are showing up. For some reason it's slowing down to 55 right here. I'm going to put the uh, foot on the accelerator here because it's 70 through here. And then it picks back up right here, so that's good. Now we got a car right here. I'm going to, I'm going to do, see what it does right when we're next to it and to put that signal over because we do have to get over. Otherwise, this thing's going to slam on the brakes right there for that car, which is amazing. So it just slammed on the brakes for that tractor trailer that was on the side of the road right there because it was in our lane. It was encroaching in our lane. And that's awesome to be able to see that happen. Now you might've seen that video where the Tesla ran right into the back of that other vehicle. You know, unfortunately, I, I, that stinks that that happens, but that, I believe the driver walked away pretty, uh, pretty well off and just, you know, damaged the car there. But in the video, you can actually see where the car starts to hit the brakes and slam on the brakes and lock it up. Either that or the, the owner did it. And there we go, we're off the interstate. Now we got all pilots off. That was pretty good. Let's see how it handles here. It's still pushing at 70. Dropped us to 45. Wants me to touch the steering wheel there. It's got three lanes to pick from, and I don't know what it's going to do. It guided right to the middle, and that was pretty good. You saw that little that movement there. It actually guided right to the middle. We got our traffic following us, and it's going to slow down. It doesn't want to make it through this one here. Will it go around it on its own? Let me see. Will it? Will it? Whoa! That was pretty cool. I didn't do, I was, my hands were there, but that's the first time I've seen it go around a turn like that with, you know, minimal markings on the road. Uh, kicked me out of autopilot, which is fine. It said take over immediately. I uh, didn't, didn't uh, do the, disable me from autopilot, but it just kicked me out of it. That was pretty cool. It made it around that turn there pretty good. I don't know if that was just a fluke, but hey, I'll take it. All right, so we're coming up to more traffic up here. We got a red light and I'm gonna move over to this outside lane. I'm gonna move over to this outside lane over here, if I can. Let's go to the inside. There we go. That was an aggressive lane change. All right, here we go. We're, uh, looks like three car lengths back. We got a green light. We got a green bar, as you can see right there, which tells us that we are going to proceed through without any warning. And that's awesome. That's pretty good because it was frustrating before. I'll tell you that right now, going through these traffic lights. And if you live in a city that has traffic light after traffic light, you're constantly just tapping this thing. And I would turn it off periodically because there's enough traffic to stop and slow on its own here. So it kind of took a step forward, but then it kind of took a step back and was doing what it was before. Now it's just uh, proceeding through 
and if it turns yellow, it will stop for you. So right here, it's saying that it's got a green bar. We're clear through it. It did slow down. Good. A little bit of a wobble right there. So I haven't seen any other markings except for the railroad tracks, and I might be wrong in saying that those are new. Uh, if you've seen any in here, let me know, because I have not seen any in a, in a while uh, that were new. I didn't see anything like yield signs or uh, anything other than the stop signs. Well, I want to thank you guys for watching, liking, and subscribing. Uh, I appreciate you guys riding along with me here. Uh, um, the feedback on the last one there, I did get the camera up in the front so you guys could see the traffic lights. I feel bad for that last time. It, was, it literally was this camera and it was blocking everything. You couldn't see anything. But now you can see the traffic lights, you can see what they're doing, and you can see me proceed through them. Or the car proceed. I'm not driving. I don't know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks for watching.